Okay, in today's video, we are going to go over the fascinating work energy theorem or work energy principle, depending on how it's named in your book. And let's just start off with the definition of the work energy theorem. It's just the net work that is done on an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy. So they're just telling you that the work done on an object is equal to the kinetic energy. So if you know the kinetic energy, you know the amount of work. If you know the work, you know the change in kinetic energy. And therefore, we write that down like this. And it's the net work. I want to point out that it's the net work. It's not the work done by one of the forces equal to the change in kinetic energy. Because, of course, you could have friction force acting in the opposite direction. So it's the net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. You just need to keep in mind that those two things are equal. And that means that Fd cosine theta, which is the equation for work, is equal to... Now, I didn't write down here mv squared final minus mv squared initial, but it's equal to the kinetic energy. It's equal to the change in kinetic energy. And the most common way you'll use this, I think, is you're given some mass and velocity, and they want to know the mass and the velocity of an object, or the mass and the change in velocity of an object, and they'll ask you what is the amount of work that is done. And you'll be thinking work is Fd cosine theta, but I haven't been given a force or a distance. But if you calculate the change in kinetic energy, then you can figure out the amount of work because they're equal to each other. Also, you'll use this to calculate the change in velocity given the amount of work or a force and a distance. Okay, So we'll do a couple examples in just a minute, but I just want to do a little bit more talk for another minute about the relationship between the work the network and the kinetic energy. Now we can have three kinds of network, positive, zero, and ne zero and negative and positive. If the network is zero, what does that mean about the kinetic energy? That means there's no change in kinetic energy. I mean, that's what it says right there. Network is zero, kinetic energy is zero. But just keep that in mind. If the network is zero, then the object is not speeding up or slowing down, and there's no change in the velocity. Could be constant, could be moving at a constant velocity or standing still. Now, if the network is positive, that means the kinetic energy is increasing. That means the net force is in the direction of motion. And if the network is negative, that means the object is slowing down. And that the, uh, the kinetic energy is decreasing if the net force is opposite the direction of motion. Okay? I wish there was more to say about than that, but that's really it. It's really to remember that the network is equal to the kinetic energy. And if you can calculate the kinetic energy, then you can calculate the work done on an object. Okay, and let's do a couple examples right now. Here we have sitting in the cafeteria board one day is little Susie, and she wants to start a food fight, like all nice students like to do. So she picks up her apple and it weighs, has a mass of 110 grams, and she's going to throw it at arch enemy Joni, and she wants to know, and we want to know if the apple is accelerated, she has it in her hand, and she has it kind of holding still in her hand, then she moves it forward to a velocity, accelerates it forward to a velocity of 25 meters per second, how much work does she do on that apple? How much work does Susie do on the apple? Now, you might be thinking, okay, let's write down the work equation, but hmm, we don't have a force and we don't have a distance, so we can't use the work. Now, I just said, remember, as you remember, that the work energy theorem is the change in the network is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So if we can calculate the kinetic energy and we have the mass, we have the velocities, so we can calculate the change in kinetic energy, Therefore, we can calculate the amount of work. Now, what we're going to do is just going to calculate the change in kinetic energy. Now, the initial kinetic energy is zero, so we don't really need to write that down. We're just going to calculate the final kinetic energy, and the final kinetic energy, kinetic energy final, is just going to be one half v final squared, and that will give us the amount of work. And the final kinetic energy is one half times the mass in kilograms, so 0 0.110 kilograms times the velocity of the apple, the speed of the apple squared. Remember to square, you square just the velocity. And you get that the change in kinetic energy of the apple is 34.3 joules. Well, if Susie changed the apple's kinetic energy by 34.3 joules, that means she also did 34.3 joules of work on the apple because they're equal to each other. That's the work energy theorem. The kinetic energy is equal to the change in work. The change in work is equal to... The, chain, the network is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind. Let's do one more. This time we have a car. Yes, is it a car? It's a car. It has a mass of 900 kilograms and it's already moving. We're going to speed it up. It's going to increase its velocity. So in this case, 
Let's write down, we're going to do, we want to know how much work is done. Well, let's see. Once again, we weren't given a force and we weren't given a distance over which that force is applied. So we got to remember that we can use the work energy principle. You have to remember that. That's something you kind of have to have in your head, that if you can calculate the change in kinetic energy, which we can because we have the mass and the two velocities, then we can calculate how much work we did on the object. If you do work on an object, you're going to change it. If the net work is greater than zero, you're going to change the object's velocity. Okay, so let's see. We're going to write down that the net work is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Keep that in mind. Remember, change in kinetic energy, temperature, all those things, it's always final minus initial. Okay, so that's we're going to expand that out like that. 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. Remember, the masses and the halves are the same, so it's just 1 half times 900 times 25 meters per second squared minus one half, the same car, 900 kilograms, and this time it's 15 meters per second squared. And if you do that on your calculator, you will get that the net work done on the object to increase its velocity when it's 900 kilograms, it goes from 15 to 25 meters per second, is 1.80 times 10 to the 5 joules. That's the work energy theorem, okay? Thank you so much for watching. In the next videos, we'll do a few more problems, which you can link to right here, where we'll do some problems where we calculate the change in velocity. That is also fascinating. It involves the square root. And thanks for watching. If you found that helpful, please, it makes me very happy if you give me a comment, a positive comment in the comment section below, or a good thumbs up. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you.